their G2 on your screen. Uh, we saw them earlier today losing the front line, but let's take a good look at them in their poster. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. There's wow. synergy there, too. They're all wearing the same goggles. They're ready to go. Look at that. Wow, that's so serious. Rizzo mm -hmm. looks hard in the middle there, doesn't he? They're so serious. <laughs> o opposite to what they are in the uh, in the room. They were really <laughs> loud. We could hear them, uh, or Frontline could hear them next mm. door, just shouting their heads off whenever they scored. Yeah. What's that like, Cox, playing right ne in a room right next to your opponents? And can you hear a uh, lot of shouting? I, I mean, think, I a think lot's I probably shouting louder than anybody in uh, your team. I I mean it, I, w I have speed in my team. Oh true, mm. yes. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Whatever the other uh, teams do, speed can do better. <laughs> I I asked Jorby Cooks because he was in your room while you were playing, and he said that he doesn't think that you can get a word in with with speed <laughs> and a lot. <laughs> you, Pretty you much, yeah. <laughs> but do you do you like that though? Because it yeah, seems yeah. like you guys have some really great synergy. I mean, even early on, obviously the results this weekend were mm -hmm. a bit disappointing. But we can all see, and I mean, everybody online seems to see the potential. And I think right now in Rocket League, the thing to, to go for has got to be a team that looks like they can win a LAN. Well, Speed was saying as well, that was their kind of honeymoon period. Well, Speed, he likes honeymooning every team, you know, <laughs> winning does, yeah. WSOE, gets a lot in, does very well. Um, how do you get past that one, Cux? How do you get Speed or, or the, the honeymoon period? When that ends, how do you bring it back to becoming a top team? Or do you team? keep just swapping... You know, oh, I just keep swapping players every uh, season. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you, are no you more about trying to have success or have fun or like both or which is more important? To me, uh, have success. Success. Yeah. But I'm like I play better when I'm on a environment with speed and, and leanness because they are having fun. fun. Well, yeah. We've talked a lot about confidence as well, and that I think comes when you have a new team. There's less pressure on you. So definitely potential there. A lot of pressure on these two teams. Yeah, here we are, game number one. Yeah, this is the last chance for both of them. Dignitas came into today with only one life left. G2 had a real chance to go into winner's finals. They were 3-1 up in games against Frontline before losing three games in a row. And that is why they find themselves here. But, you know, talking around the venue, I think most people have talked to said that G2 were the favorites, but Cox thinks Dignitas are the favorites. Yeah. You did think your set was on G2. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I uh, like, my head are PSG instead yeah, of G2 G for some yeah, reason. Yeah. I got very confused. Well, I guess if you were looking at the bracket, you probably would have predicted, I uh, guess, front that, line, that yes. yeah, yeah. Front line did lose that one. I think it's even interesting that Dignitas are here in the first place. Like, realistically, given the group of death, they played yeah. up. They got into that upper bracket to secure our top three. The and they didn't place. expect to beat Vitality either. They no. thought they were going to lose that one. So of course, well. what, what are your thoughts on Vitality? Obviously, they won the World Championships, but they haven't really played that well since. Uh, what do you think of, of that team? Um, I feel like Vitality plays very reactional. Um, it's a very like difficult play style to make. Like it doesn't work every time unless yeah. every player is on point every single day. Okay. Um, so I still think they are the best in the world. It's just they need to step up. Uh, on LAN days, pretty much. Why did it work so well online then? Online? Yeah, on League Play. Uh, I don't know. Uh, they all have a good ping. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you think maybe it's just because online there's less pressure, so they're not making those mistakes like you mentioned? Um, not online, there is more pressure actually. Oh, you think so? Yes. Uh, on League Play at least, yeah. That's interesting. I know well, some people much prefer the LAN aspect. You're probably one of them. But other teams are... So consistent yeah. online, well, especially in North America. G2 have been in or around the top three for their entire lifespan as a team. Ooh. Definitely been the more consistent team out of these two this weekend. Mm -hmm. Dignitas yeah. looked pretty good versus Vitality, but then yesterday they did not look half as good against... Uh, Oh, who I've actually blanked into the, the loss. It was NRG, it was NRG in the right? And it was just but NRG were kind of starting their tear. They just came yeah, they off a, a hard 4 0 against Vitality yeah. as well. And actually, well, up until that 0 second goal that NRG got, well, it didn't look terrible for them for digging test. And that is the first goal for them right now. I also question when it comes to G2, they do seem to be kind of confidence based. Their last game against Frontline, obviously, that's a game seven very different to this situation but uh, when they were behind they started struggling they started getting too aggressive 
and uh, that opens it up potentially for Dignitas to just hold on to the lead. Now, Cooks, I have to ask, uh, obviously Astral there using the Dominus, mm -hmm. and a lot of other players starting to use the Dominus more and more. Will we see Dominus Cooks here back in competitive play? Uh, I did for the entire league play yeah, last, last season. season. Didn't work very well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. See. Do you still put practice into other cars sometimes, just so that you can change to it if you have to? Yes. I, I occasionally play Raw Dog. Oh, Whoa. yeah, you do Raw Dog. I remember that. And and Dominus sometimes, but why, why don't you like the Octane cooks? Uh, because um, I cannot shoot with it because yeah. the eight box is pretty much invisible on the top. Yeah. yeah. So I cannot aim. Well, then what about uh, the Fennet? Because it has. It's still invisible. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Two yeah. nil Dignitas. Astral, Astral is really causing problems for them. Mm -hmm. but one assist, one goal. It's impossible to read Astral. Yeah. Literally impossible. Oh, Do wow. you think he knows what he's doing? <laughs> yes, I think uh, he knows. It looked like Rizzo probably was low on boost there yeah. because he was way closer to the ball than Astral. But Astral's like, well, I don't care. And also, <laughs> G2, go like, anyway. they never slow down, even in defense. You don't yeah. often see that. Rizzo's the one to do it the most, I'd say. Like, just sit there and, and wait. But, like, you're usually expecting them to be rushing to the ball. There'll be somebody rushing up the pitch knowing that they'll get a clear as well. That's what makes them so good. Right, right here. They're already ready for that clear, both of them, on G2. Very strong start for Dignitas. This, like every other game today, will be a best of seven. So it's not a disaster if you lose game one, but looking at what happened to G2 earlier today, I think they are actually a team that would really like to have a good start today. And, you know, True. get out of the gate. Uh, but Cox, so you might be able to provide some context to this. Is, do you think it's easier to be in the lead at the start of a series and then have to defend against a comeback, or would you prefer to be making a comeback from it, an early lead? Um, I think it's easier to just um, win the first game yeah. by winning the first game. It's just that I always find myself in situations where I have to come back. Yeah, you always <laughs> do. So I'm, I'm more used to it. So it's, yeah. um, in my, like, my personal preference is coming back. But I think yeah. it's easier if you win the first game. Most people want to win. Oh, that's a great passing. That should really be a testing shot. Do you think that coming back looks like you like the pressure, you step up under pressure? Obviously, if you're losing in a series, there's more pressure on you. Uh, it's not just that, it's that in, if I have to like step up and make a comeback, that means that I have to get in offense all the time, like mm. just ball chase. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so why don't you just ball chase game one? Uh, because I'm too scared to lose <laughs> the first game. <laughs> That's so why I lose. So when you have nothing <laughs> to lose, it's better because yeah. you can just go the ball. Yeah. So you heard it here yet again. I mean, we've heard this echoed time and time again just ball from chase. the caster pros this weekend. Just ball chase. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> easier to start too aggressive and then and then relax a bit rather mm. than like start not rushing to the ball and end up coming back. Mm -hmm. But uh, Dignitas showing they're still able to continue their form from uh, day one. Mm. Always interesting to get the shots of the teams between games. Mm -hmm. Not too much being said so far. I mean, there wasn't really too much happening there for G2, except, oh, Azrael's really fast in offense, so we maybe need to play quicker. And also hit our shots, because they, they were actually passing pretty well there at the end of the game. There's, there's also some context on coach. I mean, between after game one, you lose game one, there's not much to say, yeah. obviously. You're not going to be like, oh, no, guys, let's change everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it was one game. They lost by one goal. And on the other side, you know, you win a game. You're just like, keep going. Yeah. That's all, all right, you let's need just, to say. Let's just see what happens next. Yeah. And everyone's talking about that astral pinch yesterday, Cooks. Did I you, saw that. Did wow. you see I that? saw that. I was scrolling Twitter, and I just yeah. saw the craziest thing in my life. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have to practice it. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, gonna, I bet you're going to go practice did that you, for Did days. you realize that you could shoot from that corner? Like, I know it was possible. I just yeah. didn't know it was possible on purpose. <laughs> so, <laughs> so is that considered a Kaxir pitch, or is that now the Astral pitch? <laughs> off the corner? I mean, he has to do at least three more times. Okay. <laughs> there you go. This is the variation three. of the Kax pitch at the moment. How many times did you practice that your own pinch speciality in free play before you could do it consistently? Um, six months. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there you go, everyone. <laughs> the Cux really is, for those of you who don't know, an absolute grinder for these mechanics. Like, right at the beginning of Rocket League, you were just, uh, you know, streaming yourself in free play, hitting the ball up the sidewall, backboard, rebound. 
hit ball up side wall, backboard, rebound, over and over again. And you were the only person who could do that Everyone in the entire it. game. Yeah, it was a fun time. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone talks about your Twitch streams back in the day, Cooks. Were you ever, you know, oh my God. Just, <laughs> just, just chuck your stream on, even if you don't have your microphone or something, just to show, you know, free play or something. Um, I'm just going to ignore you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. The internet really is an issue. Yeah. Don't want to get that connection any worse over there. But who knows, maybe in the future. That would be the biggest comeback, yeah. I think. Well, I just remember my, my first international event, uh, RLCS Season 3, and getting to stand behind Cux and realizing just how he's legitimately the best free play player in the world. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter what you do on the pitch. <laughs> but he would win any free play world championship for oh, sure. Yeah. It was really funny watching the OG flip side first, or the, uh, actually I think the biggest contrast would have been season two where you had Marky and Greasy in your team, because you guys would all free play so differently. Coxer would be going in there with finesse, trying to, you know, do really precise things. Greasy would just be absolutely booming the ball around, and Marky, even in free play, would just be scoring <laughs> terrible goals. He would just <laughs> scoring the worst goals you've ever seen. Uh, like, why net. are you practicing this? <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. Uh, almost worked. That's She's why he so was so fun. famous for it. I couldn't believe it. They're all free playing to get, like right beside each other in <laughs> such different ways. But yeah, it worked out. <laughs> you got the win. Well, you know, Kdop's so good at the basic skills. Maybe Marky was ahead of his ahead of his time there. Just <laughs> let's get the basics down really open there. <laughs> Even though I'll hit this every time. Let's just make sure. <laughs> oh man, those were those were some good times. Let's see uh, now, G2 are 1-0 up. Can they keep this up? They're shooting, not looking anywhere near as venomous as it was earlier on oh, in the day. Oh, but oh my, oh, wow. 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 Well, they just get away with a scare. That was that was painful to watch. There was some <laughs> no, no need to panic as well. Ooh. And actually, I hate to bring it up, but speaking of painful to watch, but Cuxer, your own exit from the tournament may have been the most painful that I've seen in a while. The last goal. <laughs> the wonder flip reset where it just bounced in. What happened? Um, I'm actually not sure if he wanted to fake it. I think no, he, he wanted the he flip reset. It. Yeah, so, they so told him flip reset and then he just missed. So I tried to cover the flip reset path, um, yeah. but if he missed it. So the ball that went behind me and there was Linus and Speed going like, F0, F0, F0. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so the ball just went in. Uh, what were you thinking when you saw those two <laughs> jumping in that I mean, zero boost? I, I already knew that they had zero. That's why I pre-jumped that. Yeah, the to deal with the, the flip reset. The reset path. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I probably should have just gone for the ball directly. I don't know. Maybe. But the, the funny, well, actually, the most I think comical thing was when it cut to you guys after the game. Speed had already left the room. <laughs> a lot had his head in his hands, and you were just slumped in your chair. Yeah. All the way down. Mm -hmm. Like, such a funny moment, but before that we were just all so distraught because it was a great series right up until the end. And yeah, to see you guys go out like that was definitely not what we were expecting. I know Frontline were more scared of playing against the Bricks mm. than really? uh, Rogue, yeah. We never beat them. <laughs> yeah, but it's always, Ooh. I guess, harder to predict what you guys are doing. Mm. Astral is too fast here. Yet again, causing big problems in the air. Rizzo, he was up so Yeah, he decided early. to contest that, but he just has to go faster against a player like Astral. He waited too long. He chills for a long time in that net. It may just be Rizzo thinking, well, if I rush this, I, I'm going to beat him. So obviously he knows that and he won't go for it. But Astral doesn't really care. Wait a minute, was that on that the hunt demo, Rizzo? That was on yeah. the hunt on Rizzo. The hunt. <laughs> if they do win this series, he'll bring that up. <laughs> Big game hunter. <laughs> yeah, we have to ask you about this new uh, game mode or game mechanic that we've yep. been th we've been theory crafting. This I don't cuts. think you'll like it. So, what do you think about um, a new mechanic called on the hunt? And the way it works is if you're following someone on the other team, mm -hmm. uh, like sort of tailgating them, so you get in their slipstream, get a speed boost. You, you, you are now <laughs> on the hunt. You get a speed boost. So and you're you hunting them down. Demo them from behind. What do you think about that? Is this something you are making up right now? Is yeah, yeah, we want this in the game. We've been uh, talking about this all weekend. No. Why not? Because um, 
like avoiding demos is already too hard. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what, about <laughs> what about slip streams in general? Like if you could get behind your own teammate and help those ball chasers to get some extra speed when <laughs> when speed oh, and a lot are in the exact same spot. It's like spot. you have a launch pad. You're just it's like, like it's like starting right. like a peloton. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then somebody just comes flying over yeah. the fastest aerial you've ever seen. You get Ferra and your slipstream. The slip guy in front just moves off at the last second, and Ferra's just no oh my taking goodness. off. Give Fair a runway. The fastest <laughs> Airbus takeoff you've ever seen. I feel like a jet fighter. Oh man, now, now I really want to see that. That's why Fair wants bigger maps, because he gets a larger runway yeah. to take off. <laughs> what would you if you could make one change to Rocket League Cux, what would it be? Only one. Yeah, one like gameplay change. Mm, I would probably make the flips uh, not block um, gravity. Oh, that's mm -hmm. interesting. Because that's what it was like in the original game, Sarp, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So if you flip forward, flip in any direction, it doesn't cancel your car it falling. It, it doesn't stop speed, your right? car going up. It just yeah. moves in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's interesting. That's more, I guess, intuitive for newer players too. Yeah, it would really change things like ceiling shots. It, it, it would stop a lot of like flip resets and stuff like yeah. that. When yeah. you first play the game and you tilt backwards and then flip forwards, you keep going backwards. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. You're trying to go forwards. Yeah. Yeah, it is I thought, you know what I thought you were going to say is double camera settings. Because I remember back when you were trying out <laughs> this crazy setup. I don't remember how you did it, but you could push a button in your controller and it would swap camera settings mid-game. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was like... Uh, something I did with PS4 Windows, where I would press a button and the right analog would go like... Um, oh, it would go up so you could look over the yes, ball. Yeah. Yes. So Cux had two camera settings wow. at any time. <laughs> and that, he was just like driving around. That didn't, didn't last for long. <laughs> it was very bad. <laughs> That's probably really bad for your placebo. You just switch it yeah. constantly. But that, yeah, that looks pretty funny. I was interested to see you come up with that. I mean, out of everybody I've ever worked with in Rocket League, you're someone who always finds a way to, you know, Make it make like a setting change in your monitor that nobody else has thought of. You just have a vision advantage out of it. I, I mean, I'm still waiting for Psyonix to implement more than 110 FOV. I'm still waiting for more it. More than 110 FOV? Yeah, uh, as well as like 95i and stuff like that. Wow. Mm. How high do you want the FOV to go? 115. Okay. Oh, just a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> That's very just bump it up a touch. Did yeah. you, have you tried this somehow? Yeah. Wait, hi. Cook's uh, <laughs> hacking live on stream. <laughs> it's literally the easiest thing, but I'm not going to say it on stream because. Ooh, yeah. oh, okay, okay. It's very easy. I respect though. that. There we go. We've broken the so game. So 115 FOV oh, is really good. Sure. Yeah. Oh, wow. Tying it up <laughs> here. So yeah, meanwhile, we've got very nice passing play by G2. Rizzo that was is something just sitting there waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Hit me. This but is something they've been doing well all day. It felt the like their part. signature, you know, having somebody push forward, know that they're going to be the first to the ball. It's something that they're really good at, just getting around the pitch really fast, being mm. ready for the touches. So they are winning the race to most balls. That is mm. why it was so impressive earlier for Fruity to start. That's what Cloud9 yeah. used to be known for in North America, mm -hmm. the passing team. Yeah, so I think G2 are now the North American passing and, and team. And Cloud9 did those similar passes where they're pushing it up. So mm. it, it it seems counterintuitive to, I guess, the early days of Rocket League where you know passing across was safer. Yeah. Pa if you pass it slightly forward, it goes towards your teammates. But it's so much faster to do that. If you're ready for it, it works out really well. well I think the original infield passing team one of the members oh, is sitting right here. Oh yeah, it's got to be a guy. Yeah, I still remember season two, Grand season Final. two, like and season three. The flip side were really, I think, revolutionising that. So I saw a pre-jump pass play with Marky. <laughs> yeah, like me and CJ, we we actually watched the season two Grand Final replay that you guys won, and we were expecting it to just be a whole pile of trash. It was good. So <laughs> there so were some really good passing plays. So if Cuxy invented passing, does that mean that an infield pass should actually be called a Cux Cuxer pass? pass? Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what the Rocket League community likes to do. Everything yeah. has to have a name. Um, after the person. Mm -hmm. Yep. After persons, after things like waterfalls or, mm -hmm. you know, Tarzan or Spider Man. I don't know. Yeah. There's all these like weird Guillotine. things being brought up. Oh, with it. <laughs> that was a thing. I'm pretty yeah. sure that's a, a waterfall. Wave punk, though, oh right? my goodness. Yeah, yeah, he likes making up. Wave punk just coming up with all the names for things. Mm -hmm. I can't Cooks, keep up with it. As I as I see Speed and, and a lot playing table tennis over there, I have to say every EU person I've played against has been really good at table tennis. Did you play K-Dop? I have played K-Dop. I have not beaten him yet. Are you good at table tennis? 
undecent. Ooh. He, and oh. he's very humble, so yeah. he's, that just means he's, he's probably very the best good. here. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently Cassio, uh, no, for Veloce, is a really good table tennis player. I know Marky Duda used to be really good. Yeah, he, he was. was like eighth best, well, under 17 or something in Scotland or UK at the time. I was but the best player in my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even the best. <laughs> <laughs> What is going on here? <laughs> We've got Azrael riding on top of the ball. Actually, my favorite part of this game so far is... Oh, there it is. Chicago okay. Billy. Oh, okay. What? Okay. Well, I, this is my favorite part of the game now. <laughs> <laughs> this game off every member, but I don't think it was very intentional. Chain apps. Nah, that's... <laughs> he made that. He even got a flip reset. Just in case. <laughs> what, that's a that happens emotion. more often than you think as well. Right? Yeah. Hit the bar and you just follow it up. It happens a lot to me. All my flip resets is because I tried to aerial and I accidentally hit them with the bottom of my curve. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm just glad to know that JNaps has learned that from me. <laughs> Look at that from Rizzo. He's trying to blind pass that infield to Chicago. He wasn't ready. Good awareness. G2 are always looking for the pass. JNaps back on the skyline as well, Cooks. Have you used the skyline much? The what? The Skyline car. The car. Oh, I never used it. I tried it. Hybrid. I didn't like it. No? Yeah. It's very flat and long. I thought it was more like medium and it's, medium. It's <laughs> Yeah, it's hybrid. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I made the mistake of saying I don't it was like the Dominus and yeah, I got a million yeah. messages about it. We can't it. believe oh, yeah. Yami anymore though. Yeah. <laughs> He's not trusting. Well, no, I know. I know probably better than anyone else now because everyone's <laughs> told me exactly <laughs> what each hitbox is at this point. Yeah, you know, I think it's most interesting actually is JNAPS is using some really heavy wheels there. Mm -hmm. But they're you're the wheels you used to use, right? Or were they not? The big Trahirs? Ah, uh, yeah, red. I think. I yeah. think, yeah. So, back in the day, everybody used to use these big wheels, and then everybody switched to, like, Cristiano's and more, like, simple wheels. Is this, like, uh, is this, like, JNAPS showing Dignitas how easy it is? He's going to beat them with the heaviest wheels in the game. Oh! oh. Whoa! Wait a minute. Hopefully we get Chicago's POV on this. This is a nasty shot. Did he half volley that? Yep. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness, no what a goal. And you even see Astral's just so keen, ready for even the miss. Yeah. He was ready to push out for it. Astral's always pushing out a net when he's yep. playing with Dignitas. That's also, it's got to be rough for his teammates because they should be, assumedly, expecting him to be covering the net while they're yeah. Do you think challenge. he's just trying to be a little bit too fast as another yeah. open net goes in? Like, is he trying to just keep his supersonic well, speed? Because obviously if you go into net, you lose a lot of, a lot of well, Astral's pretty, you know, I guess new to competitive as such, and that's that's pretty common. They're all trying to get onto attack. Yeah, he's always thinking about that. It seems. Yeah. What do you think, Cox? Have you noticed Astral being a little bit too aggressive when he's third man? When um, you play him, maybe it's also something that he has to fix because he, when he's third man, he probably calls that he has no boost and uh, doesn't say that he's still going for it, but he still goes for it. Okay. Oh right, that's interesting. And then yesterday when he played with Chaussette and Farah, they're all speaking French in comms for the All-Star, or uh, rather the Crew Battles matches, and he didn't seem to have anywhere near as many missteps in defense. Hmm. I wonder if that's really to pressure I was or actually, Yeah, language. I was talking to Ashel about that, and he said coming in French, uh, when he's coming to English, he, he says stuff like, I'm middle. However, he said when he's in French, he can say, I'm about to be middle and stuff like that. Oh, so he said timing. the French comms are a little bit different, like, I'm not here yet, but I will be there in a minute. It's more specific. Yeah, yeah. However, however, in English, it, it's just, you know, where he is right now. So All right. that was interesting to hear from him. That goal was really uh, interesting, too, from Dignitas, because they forced Chicago to make some great saves. Oh, oh, wait a minute. This goal is pretty interesting, Yummy. Mm -hmm. Astral. He even oh. jumped off the ceiling for this, but he still has his dodge because he got there so quickly. Such a difficult read That's there, That's unbelievable too. to time that so effectively mm. with a jump. Like, there, yeah. there was no chance for the defender to get up there. Like, they have to wait. But he to had to jump off the ceiling to get to that to ball get as there. well. Yeah. And then he still had the flip in time. It's really well, unreal. There you go. It's a good with the bad, isn't it? Astral, he's yeah. trying to be so fast in defense, which hurts them, and now... But that's in what Dignitas want. They want, yeah. want Astral yeah. to be pushing up. Yeah. They're, they're trying to support 
the player yeah. knowing just exactly what he can do. But Always they, they need somebody to fill the shoes Turbo had because, I mean, when Yukio joined in place of KDOP initially on the, the Contest roster, it looked like they lost a lot of offensive prowess. Um, and defensively, they were still hanging in really well in series. And now with Astral, you've got the offense that you liked when KDOP left, but suddenly there's no defense because Turbo's gone. Mm -hmm. I think that nowadays, though, it's, it's more important to have that offense, like have that firepower and then sort out the defense. Yeah. Because if you can score goals, you know, you can win games. You know, you yeah. score three or four goals in a game, like every game, two or three goals, you're going to win a lot of games, yeah. no matter how bad your defense is. You've got to think about who's all been successful across the year. They've all had this one player who's done a lot. Even WSOE, you had speed, like just going and doing crazy stuff and, yeah. and making it hard for the defense. Whose responsibility do you think it is, Cox, to be that rock and Dignitas defense to stop all these really cheap goals happening? Right now, Yukio. Yukio? Mm. Yeah. Because, I mean, the Astro keeps scoring, so if they could just get somebody to hold it down, and they're going to be fine. It's a nice pass. This is like OG Dignitas right there, except instead of Kato, we got Astro booming it in the corner. Uh, I would say, yeah, Yukio is, um, is pretty much in Turbo's role. Yeah, or he has to be, but that's really hard because Turbo is so good at that. Yeah, but they have a pretty similar playstyle, which I think is why they didn't work very well together. Mm. Another high-scoring game, and we, we see this a lot, uh, pretty often, Cooks, where there's there's one game that will be about 6 or 7 nil, and then the next game, you know, it'll be yeah. close <laughs> or they'll lose. And we saw that with your team uh, in the, was it the regional championships, where you scored seven goals in one game, it was like 10 nil. And you lost the series. I think yes. you had 15 goals to four for the whole series, and you <laughs> and lost. You lost. <laughs> uh, <great>. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to go on the striker to be yeah. <laughs> Extra money. Nice. So do you think you maybe have a similar problem to Dignitas? Because your goals are not difficult to come by. But defensively, you do concede probably quite a lot of bad goals. Yeah. So maybe who would you think is the, is the turbo for your team, or who needs to be that player who just, not even like plays third man, but just is always there in defense when they need to be? Uh, it's, I feel like it's either me or uh, or Speed, mm. like both of us. But uh, Speed doesn't like being back there, right? Yeah, Speed loves being offense. Uh, yeah, but you might be surprised how many times he's so like, Waiting, oh no, I, uh, waiting for I, yeah. the opportunity to jump and defend. I, ra I rate Speed's defense yeah. a lot. Like when he was uh, making a run through rival series with Triple Trouble, he like carried that team defensively. Get him on defense. Absolutely carried. I think if he can do that, then it, maybe you guys could be yeah. super solid all around. But that's up to Speed to decide. Let's see if we can. Yeah. As he walks out. past here, if he's gonna manage that, he's just looking at us right now, thinking, "What are they saying about me?" And now he's mouthing things. We, we can't hear a word of what he's saying. He's holding it. He's holding <laughs> oh, he's coming to the paddle. microphone. He's coming Over to the microphone. Here we I go. wonder if it's I legit on. heard Triple Trouble from halfway across the studio, <laughs> and I thought, neither of the other two are here. <laughs> <laughs> this has to be about me. We said that you carried them because of your defense. We said you need to go on defense more. <laughs> he does not. You're, you're just like, oh, I like that they're saying that I carried them, but I don't want them to think I'm a defender, because that'll mean less goals that for mean me. That'll mean less goals, yes. And I don't less want boost that to as well. happen. Yeah, speed's all about the goals and the boost. <laughs> the flashy stuff. Well, this game here, speed, I don't know if you've been catching much of it. He's we're talking about how <laughs> Dignitas are having a lot of problems with, they're, they're conceding a lot of cheap goals because nobody's just in goal when an easy shot is coming in. Hmm. And uh, Cox thinks that Yukio is probably the player who has to fill that role. Out because Astro won. Oh. Yeah. I mean, Astro, yeah. oh. Because Astro, Astro, Astro keeps scoring. Oh, yeah, yeah okay, 5 I four. understand now. <laughs> That's not how you want to end this game. Such an important one, an overtime, and Chicago just couldn't get boost? around it. He got yeah. a bit ahead of it by looks things, yeah, then he couldn't he get a good clear. You have to make a He's expecting an absolute boomer, and it wasn't quite as fast as he thought. But no. yeah, what do you think? Do you, would you agree with uh, Cox there that Yukio is the best player um, to fill that defensive role? Maybe. I mean, it definitely isn't Astral. <laughs> that is true. That is very correct. Um, I think Yukio is very good on low boost. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in in the situation that Astral eats it all, and Panda's <laughs> not very good with low boost either. Or saw that rather, yesterday in his one well. it, it would naturally be Yukio, I think, that needs to be more passive. Yeah. 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 
And what about with your team? Because Cox actually <laughs> said it could be either of you guys, but what's, what do you reckon about that? Does he have eyes? <laughs> well, Speed, you did say yesterday, if you're on defense, you don't concede. But if you're, oh, yeah. but you don't score as well. But if you're on offense, you score. But then it's like five, five old, five, five, five. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, because the w the way I play offense is that I tend to just sit up field. I'm not very good at playing both. But wouldn't you rather just not concede every game and then you know try what, and work? What's on more entertaining, a nil, a nil, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> thinking about the a nil, nil four minute OT or a six five <laughs> barnstormer with, <laughs> with barnstormer. eight ceiling shots? <laughs> so you're here, you're here just to entertain the crowd. I love the one. I, I, mean, I don't one. think there's any doubt that the Bricks are one of the most entertaining <laughs> yeah, teams 100%. in the scene at the moment. Does that make you happy, Cux, That he's worried more about the crowd. <laughs> ceiling I, shots. I don't know what to think. Well, yeah. I remember what Cux said earlier. Is like he wants success more than anything else, but uh -huh. that tends to come when fun is being had. So the good the good I formula agree. appears to be present there you go. for you guys in the long run. Uh, G2 are in a tough spot. Dignitas are continuing what Frontline started earlier. And Vile Panda with no boost actually making a play. As I can smell food behind me, it's all I can think about. And folks, <laughs> I have to ask, I've heard a story, or I've heard that you have said that when you're in America, you won't eat Italian food. Is that true? Uh, yeah. Why yeah, is that? It's not explain. not authentic? Yeah. yeah, sometimes there is no salt in the pasta. Oh. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> things are just done, done properly, so I might just eat a burger since I'm in America. <laughs> so when you eat pasta and you in America, you like... You like taste it. <laughs> Not enough salt <laughs> straight away. Yeah. Well, what, do you, what do you think what? about American pizza? Yeah. Uh, it depends. Oh. It's, it's oh. 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 Okay. 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 Panda uh. didn't miss. Anyway, back to the pizza. <laughs> back to the important topic. Uh, I think it, it, it depends on where. Yeah. Yeah. I, I knew York was fine. Oh yeah. Well, American pizza are very different depending on where you are. Yeah. It's true. There's variety. Um, but Italian food very much about the basics coming together really well. And I think American food may be a bit more extravagant, would well, you say? I remember one time when Lobdell bought, bought us a deep dish pizza, uh -huh. and it was like, uh, you know, like the, the deep end of a swimming pool. It was about that deep. You know, we yeah. could actually go for a few laps in there. I'd never seen anything like it. And Cuck just took one look at it and said, this isn't a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> is not a pizza. I miss Quinn. <laughs> what, what is, what is your favorite food, Cooks? <laughs> What's your favorite thing to eat? Um... I don't know how to translate it. I don't like. I don't know. Is it like a pasta sort of? What does it contain? Yeah. I I don't I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Something. know because it's it's everything in Italian. I don't know. Okay. And what, what does it taste like? Describe the yeah. flavors. As, no, Johnny, this salty, it, it, sweet, don't savory. Worry. It's so it's good. Too, it's too you wouldn't hard. understand. It's too <laughs> Appar apparently the Italians just have this secret <laughs> food menu. <laughs> and we learned a lot yesterday, Cooks, about pros eating cereal. Do you eat cereal, firstly? Like uh, yeah, yeah. And do you put the uh, cereal uh, before the milk? Or the milk before the cereal? Depends on the day. I don't oh. care. Really. That's what Garrett said, right? That's what Garrett said. What? I don't understand. So what kind of conditions would determine the milk going in first when it's cloudy? Which one it picks up first? <laughs> yeah. They're like, if I'm... Like, if I didn't wake up very well, I would put the milk first. Why? Because you might Be get too much if you put it in an after, or...? I don't know, because I would have my eyes closed. I don't oh, know. It's so, okay. so usually you put cereal, because yes. Turtle is behind you right now. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> livid. He's furious. <laughs> because he's an advocate for cereal <laughs> before milk. Because yeah, he's a normal person, I think <laughs> is what you mean. But this tournament starts early as well. You're, you're a notorious slow riser, Cux, so... Like, it takes you some time to really get warmed up once you've oh. woken up. Yeah. So Indeed. do you think the the early starts went against you this tournament? Uh, yeah, definitely. Just yeah. blame the entire loss on that. That's an easy <laughs> way to go. As Turtles behind us now, what are your thoughts on Cooks here saying it's he analysis. sometimes swaps? You know, Cooks, I thought of you as a legend in the <laughs> Rocket League community, <laughs> as one of the pioneers. <laughs> I'm just really disappointed today. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Thanks for that, Turtles. <laughs> There oh man! Go. Oh dear! I don't uh, think this uh, is a thing. <laughs> a, a lot also said, uh, just diving into your life, cooks, uh, that you sometimes stay awake for two days. You sleep for ages, and then yeah. you you'll stay up for two days yeah. straight. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> why, why do you do that? <laughs> um, I don't know. I like playing for twenty hours straight. I don't know. <laughs> 
That is crazy. Is that right. all Rocket League that whole time? Uh, Rocket, Rocket League, Tekken. Oh yeah, Tekken. You used to be a uh, very high level Tekken player as mm. well. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it just comes natural. Since mm. I have nothing else to do other than streams, yeah. uh, I can just do whatever. Yeah. Wait, so how many hours are you up to in Rocket League now? A 7k. 7,000. Almost at the 10,000 hour rule when and the game will finally be figured out. <laughs> you have time on PS4 too, don't you? No, no, no. Nah, no. You was for one of the first ones, actually, right? Mm. To switch yeah. or to be over here. Yeah, that's pretty PC. much the first since like, yeah. the start. This is Again! Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> Panda. A little bit of a mind game there. He's sending a message. <laughs> one nil is sufficient. So they're still in the lead here. If they do win this, that's 3-1 to Dignitas. Do you think G2 just went, well, you know, Frontline did it to us, you know, <laughs> a 3-1 deficit. Just copy them. Well, the other thing is that uh, Dignitas actually won the first game. Mm -hmm. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, G2 equalized. The weird thing for me is that G2, just like in the Frontline series, started off with good passing. Oh, oh that's a great save. Astral actually coming in clutch in defense, but like I was saying, the passing has kind of just gone out the window for G2 a little yeah. bit. And I mean, just because it wasn't working doesn't mean they should stop doing it. I no. really feel like the problem for them is they weren't hitting their shots. The passes have got to come in. They, they also seem to, yeah, they lose it. They lost it against Frontline as well as the series went on. They started, I, yeah, passes were gone. They started Nobody changing what was successful for them earlier, but at least now, I guess, they have Jazo in the booth ready to say, you know, mm. this is what's going wrong. Let's push up more. I, I think their strength is just pushing forward, being aggressive, getting three people towards the ball. You always know Rizzo's going to hang back, so mm. defense should be held fine. Well, I mean, the problem here, we, we did actually you know, see an incredible setup in that game by Azrael with mm -hmm. like a triple touch mm -hmm. rebound that was on the goal line for Panda to put in. Azrael is just causing G2 problems. They've not figured out how to shut him down in offense. And then this game... Unlike the last one, they all they you know the mistakes weren't really happening for Dignitas, so G2 have got yeah. hard mode now. Because they're not getting free goals. I think I think with everything you you know bad about Ashwell's defense, I think that he's so good on offense. I oh think man. He, he's doing a lot more on offense than oh he yeah. is making mistakes on defense. Uh, when, so when, when he figures out the simple mistakes in defense, he is gonna yeah. be a complete 100%. powerhouse. He already is. Look at this touch. One, two, and then it's just on the goal line. It really helps too. Like if you've just got one member doing all the attack at the start, mm. then their defense is better because mm. they have two other, uh, or they have two players ready to defend to run back, not challenge, go for a fake challenge, and so it doesn't matter so much that Astral isn't yeah. there for the defense. So Cox, when you're down three-one, or when you're down, you know, significantly, and the other team only needs to win one more game, what kind of things? do you want to be happening? What kind of things are being said in comms to um, try and turn it around? Usually we come faster yeah. uh, so that we actually can get like um, an occasional like pass uh, midfield from uh, clear or stuff like that. And in general, we try to be as fast as possible without our committing. Mm. Um, basically try our thing max level. Rizzo. <laughs> yeah. He's had some rough reads so far this tournament off that corner. He has, was, yeah. Obviously, it was a difficult read. He but went whizzing. Someone that. at Rizzo's level should be here. But that. he didn't really have. You know, he had a lot of time as well. Uh -huh. I mean, he didn't need to be as quick as he probably thought he did. Yeah, but Dignitas have certainly this, been. They've conditioned him. But when you have Astral on the other yeah. team, he he got straight up beaten to the ball for a really key goal earlier in the series, or maybe even a couple, and now he's feeling like he has to go faster than, and that, he, than that's usual. That's another strength of Astral as well. He he just has to be on the pitch. And yeah. the other team's yeah. thinking, oh, where is he? You know, yeah, we he doesn't go have up. to even play well. He's yeah, still, you, you don't uh, have you know. any time. No. You just got to go. Like G2 might be feeling the same about Chorset earlier on in their series because oh. Chorset had that failed flick, but they respected yeah. him so much. Exactly. They just go for it. Yeah. He always hits those. Yeah. Like, I, I'm waiting actually to see if, like, for you, Cox, the pinch, like, sometimes that you're setting up. Everybody's expecting it from you now because you've done it so much, but you could actually just scare away an entire enemy team by just yeah, going for one. Yeah, I sometimes fake it. Yeah, you just fake it and then they all run away. You're like, thank you. Now we have space. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do most of the time. Astro. It's really interesting. That's a it's really good save go. initially, Astro but... Again. Astro again. He's done that a couple times now with the air dribbles. This, it just sticks to him like glue. Oh this my ball. Look at that. Spikes on. He's got <laughs> spike mode. 
It's just a seal that's on his nose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really there. Rizzo is just in the worst spot ever. He yeah. did keep the initial shot out, but Azrael had so much more momentum than he did that he couldn't get it clear. Dignitas now looking like they may knock G2 out of the tournament. That's pretty crazy. I think G2. a lot of people had yeah. G2 as at least top three. Finals or yeah. winning. Well, I was talking to a lot of people about this game. They're like, well, this is a 4-0 to G2, you know. Yeah. This I, is fine. I think most people thought G2 had the had the advantage against Frontline, and it certainly looked like that at the start of the series. They already beat NRG yes, or two days ago. Yeah. So they look like one of the favorites. It was probably them or Cloud9 on paper coming in as first seeds. But now, really in a tough spot. And Dignitas, credit to them. They have played well. Played well day one, now day three. And, you know, just like Vitality, if you have a big day three, you can win the entire thing, even though they started in the lower bracket. Yeah. Like, beyond this, they will need to beat the winner of um, Cloud9 versus Rogue, which will be coming up on stream right after this series. Is then that would be advancing them into the losers' finals. It's losers' semis for the for the winners of this. Yeah, there's another important note. I don't know how public the prize pools are, but you get money for your placement in groups. So both of the, or so uh, Dignitas, they came third in theirs. So they don't have less. And you, you get, there was no extra money for coming fifth or slash sixth yeah. in this. So they've guaranteed themselves extra money if they win this too. Uh, so there's a big climb for Dignitas moving forward. 2-0. Dignitas are looking. Poised. Azrael has been dominant start to finish. He's even like gluing himself to the ceiling a little bit there just because why not? G2 have only got a minute and 43 to figure this one out. That is a good position for them. Nice pass by Rizzo, but looks like it may have been a little bit too straight for JNAPS to really utilize. And we saw in G2's last series as well, you know, they were, they were down, but they in that last minute, they looked like they could have scored a goal. So I reckon we're going to see, you know, at least a few chances for G2, whether they finish them yeah. or not. You know, I mean, right before the shot set, accidental fake goal, Rizzo did have an equalizer mm -hmm. against Frontline final yeah. game. So I'm sure they're going to be trying something. Mm -hmm. This is where they go desperate, though, and I, I felt like when they were desperate to score goals, they ended up just not being able to do anything. They were just hitting the ball forward. And we even see that one of Chicago trying to set something up. Ooh. Ooh. They've been close a bunch of times now, but yeah. still at zero goals. What's impressed you the most about Dignitas this series, Cox? Because they were one of the teams everybody thought was underdogs coming in, and now look what they're doing to I mean, they weren't even meant to be here. No, like, I screamed them in the last few days, so I, I already knew. Like, they are playing very well. I think they'll win it all, maybe second place. You think they're going to win? Yeah. Wow. There you go. As long as they fix their defense, they should be able yeah. to win. What about NRG, who 4 0 Cloud9? just before this series, and they, they did beat Dignitas yesterday. Do you think Dignitas can come back and beat NRG? Uh, did NRG play Vitality? Yeah, they beat them 4-0, but it was three overtimes in a row. Ah, that, that series, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. I didn't watch NRG much, so I couldn't tell. Yeah. The only team NRG lost to was G2, Actually, who are yeah. being eliminated before our very eyes. And that, I think, will seal the deal. Dignitas advance into the top four. G2 and G2 are, are eliminated two series in a row on playoffs day. And well, this is crazy because G2, they were the top of Group A, which was, you know, the Group A, arguably, you know, the, the more stacked group. They came out really strong, 2-0. They were the number one seed coming into it out of Group A. Mm. And now they're out. It's so oh similar for all the Rocket League events we see these days, though. You know, you'll have a great start like G2 did yep. at the World Championships, 2-0 in groups, and then right in the grand final is where they fall short. So today they actually go 0-2 on playoffs today. Mm -hmm. They're 2-2 overall for the entire tournament. But that'll be disappointing for them because they were so close against Frontline and now they're just well, out the whole thing. What a climb from Dignitas. Apart yeah. from obviously Dreamhack Dallas, they lost Turbo the three-time, one of the most renowned players. And, and after that, they still looked really shaky mm -hmm. uh, in recent times. And now all of a sudden, this is their event. They're, they've come up so far from they've that. They've beaten G2 and uh -huh. NRG. As you well. know, there's a dream grudge match just... Oh, it's possible, not likely, but should Rogue and Dignitas run into each other again, Rogue would have to beat Cloud9 in the next match we see on stream. For that to happen, we'll get to see AJ versus Astral, which is <laughs> becoming quite a rivalry after their little Twitter uh, banter back and forth. So I would love to see that. It also um, means there's two EU teams in the top four now. Yeah, so again, EU 
get, got destroyed yesterday, mm-hmm. and now they're still making a comeback. I like how the moment we, we consider, could this be an all-NA final? Yeah. It's just not happened. Like the World no, Championship. Never mind. We're, we're thinking, surely there's only one EU team left, yeah. and then they just go and win it. Could still be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Except for the little Turbo Pulsa flavor that might be mm-hmm. added in there. Yeah. New flavor. Congrats to Dignitas. Really big win for them. See, they make their way down the stairs now. Somebody's probably going to become a joint. Panda is us for grinning a chat. from ear to ear. <laughs> Yukio is going to come yeah. and uh, Yukio. have a word with us. Here he is now. Yukio, congratulations. That was a very convincing win. Um, how are you guys Thank feeling? You. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good. Yeah. Doing good. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty convincing for one. How do you feel? you managed to win so convincingly? Uh, Astro's offense today was insane, so I didn't really have to do too much in offense, just try to like play solid. Mm-hmm. It's funny you mentioned that because during the series, we were asked, talking to Coxer about your guys' team, and he thinks that you know you would be the best player to fill in the role Turbo used to fill in for this team, you know, just plug in all the holes in defense, making Dignitas look just unbeatable. Nobody could score against him at some times. And we know with Astral, playing like he is, is that something you're trying to do? Just yeah, to like, support him more? Yeah, I'm just trying not to double commit and just mm-hmm. play solid, play smart. Don't overcommit and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And everyone um, everyone sort of talks about Astral's poor defense. Do you th- do you see that as a, as a big of an issue as some other people perhaps? Uh, see I think you can definitely improve a little bit in yep. defense, but it's, he's definitely not bad in defense because like, he still has yep. mechanics and skill to we're like save like, good stuff. Yeah, we're saying his offense is so good that yeah, you know, you can, it makes up for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. In- Go- going exactly. in, were you more worried about G2 than I guess what the results ended up being? Do you think they might have even taken the win? Uh, sorry, were I didn't you, hear. Were you expecting G two to maybe have taken the win, or oh. were you guys confident going in? Yeah, they beat us last time, uh, but it was like more poor performance from us. I think like we didn't really gel as a team. Like our synergy wasn't that good. Yeah. But like individually, we played fine. I think it's just like the the team play. Well, how work. how have you guys improved so much in such a, a short amount of time with Astro? Uh, it's just like going through replays and just talking about what we can improve during games mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Speaking of synergy, yesterday we got to witness, or no, it's to, in the crew battles two days ago actually, we got to witness you and Coxer reunited in 3v3 and it, yeah. I must say it looked pretty impressive. What was that like from your perspective? Yeah, In my opinion, it's easy to play with Coxer because I've been in a team with him for a year, I think, so like I still know how to play with him, mm-hmm. so it wasn't really difficult. Yeah, it was easy for me too, I could read whatever he was saying. That's, yeah, really interesting. So maybe, you know, if uh, Azrael doesn't fix his defense. We're we're pretty impressed with Azrael's offense all around. In yeah, this tournament. Tournament. Crazy. Whole, Even overall, I think this last game, a really clutch save on the goal line yeah. uh, by that same man. So congratulations to you guys on advancing, er, or advancing into the next round where you will play the winner of Cloud9 versus Rogue. Who would you rather match up against? Rogue. Rogue, because then yeah. we get to see Azrael versus no, no, AJ. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you want I mean, to play Squishy. Oh, he wants to play oh, Squishy. Yeah. Azrael wanted to okay. squash the muffin. And why is that? What? Why is that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he no just reason. does. Yeah. No reason. Well, there you go. And lastly, just one last question. Do you pour... The milk before the cereal. Or yes. The, cere- <laughs> the oh. milk before the cereal. Yes. Why is this a thing? <sighs> is this what? a European <laughs> Turtle thing? is behind the TV with his arms I in the swear, air. every time that somebody <laughs> mentions it, Turtle just pops up from yeah. somewhere. He wasn't even, yeah, just he like wasn't there before. <laughs> Absolutely. What? Over there. <laughs> that is crazy. Is this a European <laughs> thing it's or what? Like, well, I Garrett. take no responsibility for this. I'm not contributing so, like, to this. It's a bad reason for me. Yeah. I just do it because I basically leave the cereal in my room and then I just like go down and just take the milk <laughs> and go out. I, I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> the reason. That. That <laughs> you leave the cereal in of your room. Of all the excuses I've heard, <laughs> yeah. this is the one that makes the least <laughs> sense. I'm pretty sure you that's... Have a, so wait, you have a cupboard in your room full of cereal? No, is it like next to your wardrobe? 
<laughs> Wait, you have one cereal box like sitting on your desk or something? No, like on the floor. So if you're like yeah. snacking, you're like tired in the middle of a scream, you just start <laughs> snacking on cereal. So, like, so you just go downstairs and pour some milk in yeah, a bowl and take it upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the kind of crime well. that uh, <laughs> was the reason that UK sent all its convicts to Australia this, this, in the first oh, place. This, so. <laughs> this doesn't that doesn't wow. save time at all though. Like, why don't you just have the cereal downstairs? Because you have to I get mean, the milk anyway. What if you want more cereal afterwards? Oof. You know. There like you, you go. Get, you can just like put more there in you go. if you wow. put enough milk. I mean, <coughs> there. I guess there's some logic to that, but we'll have to we'll have to do some more discussion later well, on and see if we can get to the <laughs> bottom yeah. of it. Congratulations, Dean Thus and Crash Thank UQ, you. and good luck. Um, you know, in your run today, hopefully Thank you, you can go pull out the win. Yes. Yeah. Can I do a shout out? Yeah, yeah, of course. I want to shout out Ariana Grande. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for making the song Break Up With Your Girlfriend because <laughs> I'm listening to it when I'm playing and I win. <laughs> <laughs> I, was not oh I feel like there's a story behind that that we need <laughs> to hear about later but right now CJ has got to like, read out a card for us. So. Vitality, oh. We won. Oh yeah? G2, we won. Well, I know what you're going to be listening to in the next game. Of course. Mm -hmm. I think you play, play it on speaker for us all to hear, <laughs> hopefully. Shout out to yeah, Ariana Grande. And also, <laughs> I'm sure that uh, Astro will be checking out the I'm BTS sure you're <laughs> merch as well. So you can check out their signature merch at bts.gg forward slash merch. Look at that fresh merch. Cooks, are you going <sighs> to buy any of those things there? Yeah, <laughs> I might. There we go. There if go. Cooks is buying it, you got to buy it too. So check it out, bts.gg forward slash merch. Thank you, CJ. And thank you for... All of you who are watching, we're having a great time over here at BTS Rocket League, but there's a lot more to come, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this short break.